Hello, today's screencast is Phase Diagram Part 5, Iron Iron Carbide Phase Diagram Microstructures. In this screencast, we will be covering the following nuttiest points. I don't know the difference between perlite, ferrite, austenite, and cementite. What is the difference between microstructure and phase? What does terminology like eutectoid and pro-eutectoid mean when talking about microstructure? How do I draw microstructures given fraction, temperature, and composition? In this screencast, I will be using the calculations from the last screencast to explain microstructure. So if you haven't seen that video, you probably should. There's a link for it up in this corner over here. I will provide links to the particular problems throughout the video. If there is a particular microstructure or topic that you wish to see, there are a lot of annotations down here. So let's get started. We're going to draw the microstructure for these given conditions. For 1076 steel, which has the eutectoid composition at 728 degrees Celsius, which is one degree above the eutectoid temperature. I've already done these calculations in the previous video, so if you don't know where I got these numbers, here is the link for that video. Seeing as that we are in a single phase region, our microstructure looks like this. It is just single phase solid gamma. We call this austenite. I've drawn some green boundaries in here so you can tell it's a solid. So there we have it. Single phase regions are really easy to draw and understand. Things will get more interesting in the next few examples when we start adding two phases. Our next microstructure is going to be for 1076 steel at 726 degrees Celsius. 1076 steel has the eutectoid composition and 726 degrees Celsius is one degree below the eutectoid temperature. I've already written in the calculations that we did in the last video. Again, if you don't know how I did this, here's the link to the previous video up here. And here is the microstructure for these given conditions. Now, when gamma hits the eutectoid temperature, alpha and iron carbide nucleate as new phases. Then the alpha and carbide begin to grow as adjacent alternating platelets, primarily from the grain boundaries. As the alpha platelets grow, they kick out carbon, which diffuses to form the iron carbide platelets, as shown in my little diagram here. When the process is done, we call the microstructure perlite. Now, perlite is not a phase. Perlite is a microstructure made up of the phases alpha and iron carbide. To repeat, the microstructure below the eutectoid temperature at the eutectoid composition is called perlite, which is alternating platelets of eutectoid alpha and iron carbide. Here is what it looks like. Notice that the phase weight fractions are similar to the size of the corresponding microstructure features. So the alpha is 0.89. It takes up a lot more space in this microstructure than the iron carbide. Now that we've looked at eutectoid steels, we're going to look at hypoeutectoid steels and their microstructures. So for 1030 steel at 1000 degrees Celsius, we need to find the microstructure. Here are the calculations from last time. Again, the link for this calculation is up here. And we can see that our microstructure is still just single phase austenite. It looks exactly the same way it did before at the eutectoid composition, except for its composition is now 0.3 weight percent carbon instead of 0.76 weight percent carbon. But everything else, it looks exactly the same. So that's how we would draw it. Our next example is still for the same 1030 steel, but it is cooled down to 850 degrees Celsius. Now, here are all the calculations from the previous video, whose link is right there. So now we need to figure out our microstructure. Here is what it looks like, and now let me explain it. As gamma cools into the alpha plus gamma region, alpha begin to form primarily at the grain boundaries because of the high diffusion rate there. The alpha kicks out carbon because of alpha's low solubility limit of carbon, therefore enriching the gamma with the carbon that the alpha kicked out. This makes gamma's weight percent carbon increase from the overall composition, as we can see right here. We call this microstructure austenite and pro-eutectoid ferrite. The austenite being the gamma, the ferrite being the alpha, and pro-eutectoid meaning that the alpha came out before the eutectoid temperature. And again, notice that the phase fractions are similar but not exactly the same as the areas in the microstructure drawn here. 
Our next example is for the same 1030 hypoeutectoid steel, but this time at one degree above the eutectoid temperature. We are here at this x. Here are the calculations from the last video, and here's the link to the last video in case you don't know how I got these calculations. Now we need to determine the microstructure. Here's what the microstructure looks like, and now I'm going to explain it. As we cool further into the alpha plus gamma region, the alpha continues growing predominantly from the grain boundaries, and the alpha continues kicking out more and more carbon, enriching the gamma with the carbon and making the gamma's weight percent carbon increase to the eutectoid composition as seen right here. We still call this microstructure austenite plus proeutectoid ferrite. Notice that the size of the proeutectoid ferrite to reflect the change in the phase fraction up here. Our next calculation is for the same hypoeutectoid steel, but this time one degree below the eutectoid temperature. Here are the calculations from the previous video, and here is the link to the previous video if you don't know how to do these calculations. So now we need to figure out our microstructure. It looks like this. But why does it look like this? Well, remember in the previous slide, we had this microstructure right here. Now we have that same proeutectoid alpha here, and now the gamma has turned into perlite as it did in this example right here following the same exact process. Because remember that gamma was at the eutectoid composition one degree of above the eutectoid temperature, because the alpha enriched it by kicking out carbon, making its composition increase to the eutectoid composition. So that's why we have this microstructure. We call this proeutectoid alpha, which is this part right here, and perlite, which is this part in here, and again perlite is not a phase, it is a microstructure consisting of alternating platelets of eutectoid alpha plus iron carbide. Notice that the phase fractions still reflect the amount of alpha and iron carbide in the drawn microstructure here, and that this phase fraction includes both the proeutectoid and the eutectoid alpha, like this number includes both of those. Now we're going to move on to a hypereutectoid steel at 728 degrees Celsius, which is one degree above the eutectoid temperature. I've already put in the calculations from the last video into this table here. Again, if you don't know how to do them, here is the link. Now we need to determine the microstructure. Here is what the microstructure looks like. Now the iron carbide has formed at the grain boundaries of the austenite, therefore decreasing the gamma's composition to the eutectoid composition from the overall composition. We call this microstructure austenite plus proeutectoid cementite, or iron carbide, again the proeutectoid meaning that it came out above the eutectoid temperature. It is important to note that the large amount of gamma is reflected in the amount of space it takes up in this microstructure drawn below. For our last example, we're going to take that same 10100 steel, but cool it down 2 degrees to 1 degree below the eutectoid temperature. I've already done all the calculations here, and here's the link to the other calculation video if you don't know how I got these numbers. Here is what the microstructure looks like. The proeutectoid iron carbide, which was in this previous example, is still there in the microstructure, and all of that gamma this gamma here, that was at the eutectoid composition, has now formed into perlite, as in the eutectoid example earlier. So we call this microstructure proeutectoid iron carbide and perlite, which is again alternating platelets of eutectoid alpha plus iron carbide. As before, the phase fractions reflect the area that each phase takes up, and this 0.15 includes both the proeutectoid iron carbide and the eutectoid iron carbide. This slide summarizes all of the microstructures that we have covered today. In our first example, we talked about eutectoid steel, which above the eutectoid temperature, we have single-phased austenite. But below the eutectoid temperature, we have the austenite cooling down into perlite, which is a microstructure, not a phase, but perlite consists of alternating platelets of the 
the phases eutectoid alpha plus iron carbide. Next we talked about a hypo eutectoid steel in which we saw that the single phased austenite, which looked the same as the austenite from the eutectoid composition example, cooled down into the alpha plus gamma region and the alpha grew predominantly from the grain boundaries, kicking out carbon as it went, enriching the gamma. As we cool down again to one degree above the eutectoid temperature, we can see that alpha has grown even more, it has kicked out even more carbon, and the gamma has reached the eutectoid composition. From there, we can see by cooling down two more degrees, that gamma from the previous example has now become perlite itself over here, and all that pro-eutectoid alpha that came out is still there. Finally, we had the hyper-eutectoid examples in which we saw iron carbide forming again predominantly from the grain boundaries and forcing gamma's composition to decrease to the eutectoid composition. Then from here, as we cooled down below the eutectoid temperature, we have that gamma cooling again into the perlite, and that pro-eutectoid iron carbide is still present in this microstructure. So there you have it, all your microstructures in one place. This screencast has successfully addressed the given muddiest points. We talked about the difference between perlite and ferrite and austenite and cementite. We talked about the difference between a microstructure and a phase. We learned what pro-eutectoid and eutectoid mean when talking about the microstructure. And we showed how to draw the microstructure given fractions, temperature, and composition. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you need to learn about the calculations, watch the previous video. And happy engineering!